Hey there everyone, it's me Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and we just moved to a new shop in Brooksville, Florida and we've been doing so many new things all around the shop. Uh, as I was explaining putting red snappers onto my machines, I had a lot of people ask me what are red snappers and how do you use them? And then there were some people who actually said they've had their red snappers for a year and they haven't put them on their machine, they've been too scared. So I want to explain to you guys exactly what red snappers are and how to put them on your machine in a hassle-free way. So there are a lot of different ways that you could do this. You could, you essentially have to sew a three-quarter inch casing onto your leaders to slide the tubes through um, to hold the rod that will be inset to your channel to hold on to your quilt top as you put it on here. So essentially you're just sewing a casing onto here. You can take your leaders off your machine and sew them on through your sewing machine. Just a regular sit down machine. I've done that before, it's a little harder and then you have to match up your middles and all that stuff all over again on your, on your frame. So it's a lot easier to do it using your long arm machine, which I can tell you is really intimidating. The first time I did it, scared to death, but it makes this a really fast and simple project. So what are red snappers? Um, generally when you put a quilt onto the frame, you're pinning your backing and your quilt top to the canvas leaders. And these canvas leaders hold your quilt sandwich stationary on your machine frame so that you can move your machine around and you can quilt it. Red snappers eliminate the pins and they hold an even consistent tension all the way across. So when you use pins, you're putting tension right in the space where that pin is pinned, and then the gap between the two pins before the next puncture mark, that's a little bit looser. Where the pins are, it's a little bit tighter. So if you look under your frame at your leaders, once you have fresh pinned on there, you can actually see ripples and ruffles. And there are times where that has caused sections of my quilt to kind of tuck and pucker on the back. And so to kind of eliminate that, these have been really useful in getting good even tension all the way across. So the red snappers utilize a rod and channel locking system. And I actually have already put one red snapper on here. I have a 10 foot kit. It's the smallest one that you can get. Okay, and you can get these in 10 foot, 12 foot, and 14 feet lengths on boldnotionquilting.com. There's a link below the video if you want to check it out. Um, but I have a 10 foot kit for my 8 foot frame. So I'm going to show you how to put these on my 8 foot frame and then cut them off so that you have all of the extra. In your kit, you get a series of tubes. Okay, they've got a clear um, inside. There's nothing in there, right? And then they come with a set of set rods. You're going to screw those tubes together to make a long tube to go in your casing. Essentially creating a lock and channel system where once this is in your casing, you snap this over the top to lock your quilt onto, uh, onto the tube. And you have different lengths of these, I call them um, loading clamps. So these are two inch, they come with also 24 and 36 inch clamps, and you can buy additionally um, six inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch clamps as well if you'd like to get different sizes to fit different lengths of quilt tops. I use the two inch ones to help with my loading and I'll show you that at the very end, um, and then the other ones I use to actually load and hold the quilt on. So let's go ahead and work on this. Okay, in order to be successful with getting the red snappers casing completed and get them in here, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need your ruler base on your long arm machine. It leaves you a flatter surface to be able to stitch on, which is fantastic for stabilization because this can be a little bit <laughs> of a challenge as you're doing it. You want to get some kind of measuring device so that you can measure it out. We have to sew a three quarter inch casing, but I like to fold it over at seven eighths and then sew because if you fold it over at three quarters and you wob when you wobble just a little bit, not if, but when you wobble just a little bit, that casing becomes too tight to push the, the rods through the channel and then that can be really difficult as well. Ask me how I know. Next, um, you'll need the pins to pin them over and then if you have a shorter frame than your kit allows, you're going to need a set of diagonal cutters to cut off the edge. So this is a multi-use plier, but I have diagonal cutters at the bottom of it that I'll use to cut off my tube at the end. Okay, so I thought I would go ahead and just lay this out on the table for you. 
We're opening up our pack. In your pack, this isn't just a label. These are the instructions. If you read them, they tell you how big of a casing that you need to sew and then what to do to get the clamps on there working properly. It comes with You've got six two inch clamps and I'll show you how to load at the end of the video. And then you're going to have six, I want to say these are 24 inch loading clamps. And then six 36 inch I think. So these are much larger. When you take off the loading clamps, and you know that they're loading clamps because they've got this little kind of C shape uh, to them. Okay, those are all your loading clamps. What is left are your poles. Okay. So you've got these little poles and the red snappers have this little tube, okay? So it's really flexible and less likely to break. If you have um, leader grips, they are the same concept. The difference is, is that the leader grips uh, casing, the, the loading casing, is actually more brittle and they are prone to breaking because they are a harder, firmer plastic that would break and snap and bend as opposed to just being flexible around the tubing. You're also gonna get six metal rods. So these serve as like little dowel rods. And because your tubing is hollow, they're gonna go right in there and they're gonna connect them. You take your tubes, doesn't matter what size frame you have and what size kit you have, you're gonna have three for your top roller, three for your middle roller, and three for your belly bar roller. With each set of those three, you have two rods, that are going to connect those three together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the rod, okay? And you just kinda get it in there so it catches and then put the other side on it. And then you just give them a good twist over and over and over until they meet again in the middle. going to keep twisting them until they meet flush in the middle and the silver rod is gone. All right so now that we've got all three ready to go and all screwed together with the dowel rods each one of them measures the 10 feet for our 10 foot kit we're just going to put these aside I'm just laying mine on the floor until um, we got our casings all sewn and ready to go. So the first thing I want you to remember is that the way that you fold your casing matters. So when I'm folding my casing, I'm gonna fold up and over because that's what feels natural to me. But then when I go to sew, I can't see where my fold line is because it's gonna go right under my long arm to sew it. So instead, what I'm gonna do is pull this out so it's extra. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kinda lay it on itself so that I can measure and fold appropriately. So now you're gonna take your square. You're supposed to give it a three quarter inch casing. I like to fold it over at seven eighths of an inch so that when I sew with my long arm, if I wobble a little bit, when I wobble a little bit, I guess I should say, um, then I'm not gonna make my casing too slim to push my rods through at the end. Okay, so you're gonna take your Ruler, you're gonna line up the edge of your canvas with the seven eighths mark. You could do three quarters if you're really careful. I never am, so I err on the side of caution. Once I have that first one set, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it. Okay, and so then just double check before you go too far. If I take this under my long arm, am I gonna be able to see this line to sew that casing? Okay, and we'll just keep going until we get all the way through. So seven eighths. And I put my pins actually, this is a four and a half inch square, and I really like having the pins four and a half inches apart. They don't feel so close that it's 
cumbersome when I'm sewing to pull them out as I go and they're not so far apart that I'm getting a lot of uh, dips in my folds. Now if you're really anal like I can be, I actually ironed these down so that it would be more consistent all the way across and of the ones that I ironed what I will say is that um, they had a lot less dips in them as I was sewing it down. You could also probably finger press as you go and that would probably go a long way as well. So now what can be a little bit difficult is maintaining control of this huge flap of the fabric. So we're just going to roll some of that up. Okay. And then we're going to take our uh, clamps on the side and you can use these to help stabilize it as well. I found that just stabilizing the area that I'm going to be quilting is enough. So I make my clamps really short and then I just clamp it on the edge. Okay. And then you're just going to start from one side and, and begin your sewing from one side to the other. When you're all done, you'll have a casing and you'll be able to slide your rods in there. So let me show you how to get started sewing on that now. So our canvas is all pinned and hanging freely and now we need to sew it. So the first thing you're going to do is let go of the side that you're sewing and make sure that you have ample length on your leaders so that you can kind of pull it to one side because your long arm will only go so far it will not reach the edge of your leaders because of the, its track and everything that it's on. Uh, so what you're going to do is make sure that you have enough space to where you can move your machine. I'm going to stitch this in regulated mode. And I'm going to go ahead and just needle up, needle down in the corner. Pull up my threads. You can tie those off later if you'd like. And I just have it on regulated mode. So I'm moving my long arm so it will stitch. I'm going to stop in the needle down position always. And then I'm going to begin. Now you want to make sure that this canvas doesn't get caught on this uh, ruler base as you're quilting or stitching. You just want to make sure that that slack isn't getting caught on your ruler base and causing your machine to push back. Okay. You want to get your top thread and you want to leave enough slack so that you can kind of pull this canvas out of the way because you can't reach to the edge of your leaders. You have about a inch or two depending on your machine make and model right where your needles not going to get all the way over so we need to actually pull our machine over just a little bit take that first needle out and leave enough extra space to be able to kind of move the machine and stitch these leaders so we're going to pull up our bobbin thread i like to have my thread match because you will see every little warble that you make Once you get enough stitch that you're able to clamp that down, I would clamp it down because it is hard to do just moving it around with your hands, okay? As you get close to those pins, you want to take them out because you don't want to sew over them. And after you get it started, it's a much easier process. 
you have to ignore the beeping. That's my, this is a brand new machine and I haven't turned off my uh, thread brake sensor and I'm not around the wheel. If you happen to wobble, you know, it's normal, it happens. If you press this with an iron, it's less likely that your canvas is gonna bend and fold out of, I guess, square. If you're switching methods, so I'm just rolling up my bar a little bit so I can suck up the slack. If you're switching methods from say, uh, zippers or pinning or something and your canvas might be wobbly, you might wanna cut off any extra wobbliness before you um, pin these so that you can get them nice and square and straight. I just tacked off the threads at the end, and then I'm gonna cut these, and then I'll go ahead and put my tubing through. So I have finished sewing up my first casing, and I forgot to clip my threads at the end. If you want to take these threads and tie a knot a couple of times, Just for some added security, might really help you. Okay, so now we need to put the tubing in. Now generally I wait to put the tubing in until um, I've done all of my bars. We're gonna go ahead and fish this through. Just get it in. I noticed that um, when I did this on my 12 foot frame, having to go so far this will start to look like it's curling and sometimes it helps to either roll the rod one way or the other to kind of loosen out the curl that's happening there. And I always stick it out about a half of an inch through one side. You don't want it sticking out too far because then it could hit your brakes or other things. Um, and then I'm going to cut it off. So let's just stick this all the way through. I'm gonna leave it out about a half an inch because that's what I like to do. Then I'm gonna take my handy pliers. I'm gonna take all of this extra length, which is probably close to two feet. The joint is right here. So I probably could have gotten away, honestly, with not even putting the third rod on, but I wanted to fit, fill my canvas completely. Okay, then you're gonna take your diagonal cutters or, or pliers that have that sharp uh, wire cutting edge on them. Okay, you're gonna put them on there, leave yourself about a half of an inch, and then you're gonna cut it off. Okay, and it's just that simple. If it doesn't cut, do it again, no big deal. You could probably also get through this with scissors. Oh, there we go. But I like to use my wire cutters, okay? And generally, Face your wire cutters in a way where if there's anything that's gonna put any grooves or ugliness on your rod, it's facing out so it comes off on this piece. So now I've got an extra piece if I need it or want it for anything later, but it's like, you know, two and a half feet long. All right, so now we've got one red snapper leader on there and I'm just gonna have to do my belly bar and my top bar. Now I'm finally ready to test out these new machines that I got in the shop. All of our machines have the red snapper loading systems on them and they're ready to go for me to quickly get something on there and try them out. 
Thank you guys for joining me today for this video on what red snappers are, what they're used for, and how to install them onto your long arm machine. I hope that this was informational for you and beneficial. If you liked it, please give it a like, a thumbs up, and a share. If you're new to the channel, give it a subscribe uh, on YouTube, and definitely put down any questions or comments that you might have so that I could answer them um, in case there's anything that needs a little bit more clarification. So thank you all for joining me. Don't forget there's a link below this video if you want to get some red snappers for your long arm machine and I wish you all the best of luck as you're deciding on your long arm or deciding how in fact you want to start loading those quilts on your machine. Whether you like to pin, use zippers, red snappers, leader grips, you can't go wrong. Whatever feels best for you and, and your loading style is what's going to be the best outcome in the end. So take care and have a wonderful day, y'all. Happy quilting.